Hello everyone and welcome to your Easter wreath tutorial. Thank you so much for buying your kit with me and I really really hope you enjoy making your Easter wreath with me today. Um, so the wreath is completely sustainable so we're going to be making a moss based wreath and that's the first thing that we need to do and all you need for this part is your moss, the ring um, and your wire and some cutters that are going to be able to cut um, the wire off at the end. Now your moss has arrived in a um, bag and it might feel a little bit dry when you first open it and that's absolutely fine. So the beauty with moss is that you can use it time and time again. So if it is a little bit dry, just before you start, just give it a nice little spritz with some water like I've got here. If you don't have a spritz, so you could just, you know, wring out a damp cloth over the top of it just to re-wet re -wet it because this is going to provide the water source for lots of our foliage. So that's why it's important. We're using sphagnum moss here. Um, I'm just going to wet mine a little bit more because it is quite dry and that's fine. Sometimes we use moss to be decorative and other times it, it serves as a function and for the wreath it serves as a function for our flowers. And now if you've made a Christmas wreath before and everything you may have done this before so we've got our 12 inch um, wreath base here and we're going to take our wire and we're just going to attach the wire to the wreath base just by simply taking the wire underneath somewhere and just wrapping it a couple of times around one of the pieces. It doesn't matter where. I'm just gonna take it under and give it a nice tug just to start with. And that's, that's that part done. And then you're just gonna take little bundles of your moss and just sort of, you don't need it to be too tight, but scrunch them together. So you make little bundles and attach them, place them over the top of your wreath frame. And you're just gonna Take your wire over and under in a zigzag shape. Now you don't need to do this too tight. And actually, if you do do it too tight, you can actually buckle these frames. So nice and taut is how I like to describe it. Now moss is um, natural habitat. So you might find some creepy crawlies in yours, um, but that is um, all natural and that's fine. You can just remove some of the bigger twigs because some of the moss may actually end up on show in your wreath because it just looks lovely and natural as I'm sure you'll agree. So I'm just layering up my moss, continuing to go round. It is quite messy to do this. And I always advise that you um, work on sort of a kitchen island um, or somewhere that's quite high up to um, save your back from any of doing these. because You are doing lots of bending. I'm just winding the wire round. You don't need to be too neat at this stage either. You can take nice big bundles. Removing some of those bigger bits. Over and under with my wire. I'm continuing to do that the whole way around. And removing them bits again. And there is just something so lovely about making a circular wreath. I think you managed to sort of switch your attention to doing something completely different that's, you know, away from our normal daily lives and just a lovely distraction. You're aiming for the moss to be, you don't need it to be too um, thick and clumpy but just a nice size, but equally you don't want it to be too thin because we're gonna be placing some of our foliage into the moss that we do need it to have, you know, a little bit of depth to it. So hopefully you can see there, you know, that's about what you're aiming for. And then if you think, if you get to the end and you think, oh, I've got loads of moss left, I actually want to make mine a bit thicker, that's fine, just go around it again in exactly the same way. You don't need to cut the wire off, just keep going. So I'm just gonna, Thicken mine out in a few places. Oops. You want it to be quite even in terms of the depth of the moss as well. I have a, a thing about um, mossed bases, just look lovely on their own. So if you want to stop here, you can, but. I will also say that the end result of this wreath is so beautiful that you won't regret carrying on. Fab. 
have. So you don't have to finish it off where you started. It doesn't matter at all. Just sort of winding my wire back round to sort of tighten in any of the straggly loose bits. Again, doesn't have to be too neat at this stage. In a, always in a zigzag manner. And I'm not even pulling it too tightly because at this point it's already secure. So then we just need to tie it off. So you're going to turn your wreath completely upside down. Give it a nice little tug at that last piece. And I'm going to cut off my wire, sort of about there. And you're going to try and find some of that copper wire that you started with. And you're just sort of going to, I like to think of it as, I'm, as if I'm stitching something. So I've gone under the, the frame there, if you can see, and then back over it, and then back under it again. You're just going to carry on doing that a few times, nice and tightly, because you do not want this to be able to come undone. Wire holds things in place really well as well, so you don't need to worry. So that's enough. And then just with that end, I'm just going to cut it a little bit. And then I'm going to poke that back into the back of my wreath there. And then it's gone, it's hidden, and it won't poke you. And you turn your wreath back over. And I know it sounds silly, but there is now a definitive front to our uh, wreath base. So the back is obviously the one that's closest to the wire frame, even though you can't see it anymore. But just make sure that you're working on the right side of your wreath. So we're done with the moss. I'm just going to tidy up this work surface just a little bit. Just because it's nice to um, yeah, work a little bit cleanly. And the beauty of a moss base wreath is that you can use that now forever. So you never need to throw that wreath away and you will always be able to re-wet it. Um, you can take the wire off and store the moss and keep it again for another time. Yeah, so that's what's just lovely. You know, the, the wire will never you know, rot or anything. You'll just be able to keep this forever. So at this point, just have a little look at your wreath and make sure it's all nice and even. If you've got any sort of long bits at this point that you think you really don't want them on show, you can snip them off nice and easily. I mean, I actually quite like them looking a little bit sort of woodlandy and natural, so that's not a problem. Now, the next thing we're going to be doing, so tra traditionally, I guess, if you've made a Christmas wreath before, or if indeed you made one of mine, you'll know that we start building bunch of bundles of foliage and start adding them onto the wreath. This wreath is totally different. It's kind of like a living wreath, and we're putting bulbs on it so they're going to be able to live. And... The bulbs are going to be the next thing that we put on to our base. So you'll find your bulbs that come in a little bag. Hopefully you'll have read my note and you'll have given them a little water on arrival. And they'll be looking something like this. Now you can remove all of them out of there. That's absolutely fine. And in order to get these bulbs onto our wreath, we're going to shake all of the compost off. And we just want to be left with the bare roots of our um, bulbs. You can be relatively um, ruthless with these, they're quite um, sort of hardy at this point. You don't need to worry too much about the roots breaking. And in order to get the compost off, easy to do this over a bin, and you're just going to tease out each of them bulbs and then just sort of tap, tap the bulb on the side of your bin so that you're left with something like that even more and place them to one side and then you can continue to do that for all of these you don't have to use all of the bulbs that have come in your wreath it's total personal preference and you don't have to copy exactly you know what I'm doing in terms of where I'm going to place them but this is really lovely to have something that's actually living on your wreath and to watch that sort of bloom and flower So just separating them, the last little ones. Here's a bit of a messy one, you can do it outside if you prefer. Now to get all of that further compost off, we're just going to give them a little wash under the sink. So just by running the water over the roots, 
you'll see how the rest of the compost just comes away a little bit cleaner. And then just put them to one side. This one's got a little baby one attached to it. It's quite a weird thing to do and maybe a new one for you. It doesn't matter if you can't get all of the compost off because by the time you get everything else on the reef you're not really going to see too many of these roots but it's nice to try and do our best just to get that excess soil off I guess. And because we've removed the soil from these particular bulbs it's unlikely that these will then have enough food and energy to be able to flower again next year. So just want to bear in mind. You could give it a go and try, you never know. Bulbs can surprise you. But I just thought I'd let you know that they do need the nutrients off the soil. And I'll go through care, caring for your bulbs and everything at the end of the tutorial in case you're wondering how these are going to stay alive on the reef. The reef does require a little bit of maintenance, and I mean a little bit, there's not much to do, but if you want to see the flower, there's a few things that we need to do. So, now that we've got our bulbs, we then need to decide where we're going to place these on our reef base that we've made. So, these bulbs, because they're mascari, aren't going to get particularly taller. In fact, you can see some here that have already started to bud and flower. So they're not going to become much taller. If these were, you know, much um, taller flowers, you'd maybe need to consider how far out they were going to grow, but these aren't going to grow too much. The important thing here is to consider where the top of your wreath is going to be. So at this point, I would advise you taking your twine, you put in your box, and making a tie for the top so that we know and we've always got a nice point it can be anywhere it doesn't matter just threading that um, twine underneath and just tying it in a nice tight knot at the top obviously if you've got a much longer door then you might have to use some longer twine but it's hard for me to know exactly how, how big all of your doors are so i provided a rough amount and then we've just got a knot in the top there. You can do a double one if you want to, because this is going to get relatively heavy just to double secure it. So that then, I like to keep that sort of out of the way so that I know that that's always the top of my wreath. I personally like to put my bulbs in sort of little clusters. So I'm going to have two or three together down this side. And then because I don't like them to look too symmetrical, I'm then going to have one sort of round here that is going to grow up and around my wreath in that direction. But it is total personal preference, like I say, and you can sort of place them on and have a little think. And I might have one down there. Now to get these on to our wreath, really, really simple. We're just gonna be using these um, pins in place. And you're simply just gonna put them either side of the top of your bulb and poke them into our wreath, like so. And then again, over here, pop them in and they'll be nice to give them a nice little push they'll be nice and secure and then for this one down here same thing pop them in give them a nice push into our moss and just make sure not to sort of damage any of the leaves at this point as well like so. Perfect. So that's my bulbs on my wreath and I'm going to leave one to one side just in case I decide I do want to pop another one in um, at a later date but I think I'm quite happy with where they are. The next thing we're going to be doing is getting our fresh flowers into our wreath base. So I've got some vials here. Now these are probably going to be quite different to the ones that you've got in your kit. Not hugely different, but the ones that you've, you've probably found in your kit have got a long um, plastic spike at the end of them, which is much easier to get into your wreath base than these ones. Um, so when you use them, you will literally spike them right the way through your moss. 
and um, you'll cut off the ends. But essentially, this acts as our water source for our flowers, which is perfect. So the flowers that we've got are these double white tulips and these paper whites. And gosh, the paper whites just smell incredible. So I hope you're enjoying the scent of those. And the double tulips, I just love the um, double sort of ruffliness to these. Now, obviously you can see how long these are and you know, in a wreath, they would be far too long. So we're gonna be cutting them down. And if we weren't to put these in a vial, they would maybe last a day or two without a water source um, because the moss is a little bit damp for them, but it's probably not quite enough. So in order to get the most out of them, we're gonna be popping the stems into a vial to act as their, their life and their food and yeah, their water. So I'm gonna fill the vial up don't need to fill it up too much because once the stem's in, oh, that's definitely not enough, sorry. Because they don't hold too much, it's tricky to get it just the right amount. So yeah, about to there, maybe even a tiny bit less. And you'll find um, that you've got lids in there as well. Now the holes on these lids are incredibly small. So we do need to sort of give them a little snip to make them a bit wider. And I do that by just simply bending the lid like so, because they're nice and rubber plastic and I snip the opening with my scissors a little bit. And then you can see we've got a nice bigger opening there. So then you can pop the lid on. Then you can cut down one of the flowers. So I've just cut that at an angle, so it's got a bigger surface area. I'm gonna try and push that into my vial like so. And it may push out some water as you can see there but that's fine so you can see there now we've got a nice tulip in our in our flower in our water vial that's going to be happy and um, live in there for for a few days longer than you would if it didn't have water so for me because these are a bit trickier to get into my moss i'm going to be making a slight sort of hole into my um, wreath base where i want that vial to go and then i'm going to be placing in that vial. Now you'll probably find this even easier with the vials that you're using, hopefully. But yeah, again, just think about where these are going to be positioned on your wreath. And you can discard of the, the other ones. And again, I do tend to like to do things in clusters, like I've mentioned before, and think about the length of them and where you want to um, position them. So I want another one just sort of sitting maybe around here. So it needs to be a bit shorter. Probably not going to be able to get away with having another leaf on there because the vials are only skinny. And then again, snipping my vial lid, popping it on top and placing my tulip in. You can probably see actually that on these, now that that excess water has come out, the water isn't really going to come out. It is quite tight in there, so you're going to be okay. But what you want to think about is when you're putting on your wreath, if you put a flower in this way, any of the air bubbles that are then going to get created, you're going to see aren't going to give our, the, the end of our stem any water. So try to position your flowers in an upright um, position for them to be able to have a maximum drink. So again, I'm just going to make a little sort of stab in my moss, a little wiggle, make sure that my vial can go in push it into that moss. Now, you may be wondering about these white lids and if they're gonna be okay to be covered. Um, yes, so once I get everything else onto the wreath, you will see that they are gonna be absolutely fine to be covered with everything else we're gonna add. So I'm gonna add in one of the paper whites now. You don't have to use all of the flowers as well. Um, and what I'm probably gonna do is use some of them now and then add the rest of my um, flowers and foliage and then come back to it and see if there's a particular gap that I really know that I would like to have an extra flower. Put it on, flower goes in, find a home for it. So when you do with your vials just again You'll have a nice long stem that will come out the back of your wreath and you just need to trim that long stem off with your scissors. And what you want to be careful of at that point is not to snip the um, vial that the water will come out at the end of it. So yeah, quite 
quite happy with that one there. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to leave the rest and come back to it. And there really is no right or wrong way of doing this really and you, and you don't have to do it in this order, I just personally find it easier this way. There she is. A little bit long I think. Little hole, little twist, nice gap for our vial, like so. So, like I said, I'm going to pop these back in their water and then we're going to start making the foliage base. Just going to have a little tidy up as I go. So with the foliage, we are using um, olive and rosemary, um, two foliage I just absolutely love. I love the colour of these and I think that all the neutrals that we're working with just, yeah, they work really well together. So I'll get them out of my water and we're going to be cutting these down. And we're actually going to be poking these into our moss. So I wouldn't get too hung up on the length that you're going to cut them and if anything I always say go a bit longer because you can always cut them shorter but you can't really go um, longer once you've cut them shorter. So anywhere around there is absolutely fine but what you want to make sure is that you cut them at a nice 45 degree angle with your sharp snips just so that you've got a point to insert them into your wreath. So I'm going to now make a little pile of my foliage. So yeah, some will be much longer, some shorter, like I said. Try not to get too hung up on it. And like ones like that, I'm just going to leave this one. I like to make a nice little pile of each before I get started, just so... I don't have to stop and start, I guess. And I think it's nice to have, you know, some time to look back at what you've done and make sure that you're happy with it whilst you're doing stuff like this. Got a little tangle going on here. And Olive is really hardy. So it will last for a long time in our reeds. in I always recommend to try and go in one direction with your foliage stem so i.e if they're all going to go in at that angle try and follow that around the whole way of your wreath or you might find it easier to go the other way it's just kind of yeah just depends on what feels comfortable to you I like to go in at that at that in this direction so like I said you've got a nice sharp um, point to our stems now and you can just wiggle them into the moss and you can kind of tell when it's, it feels like it's, it's caught in there, you can really feel it, because it's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna be quite spread out at first, so you don't have to you know, work in clusters, and I like to work around the wreath the whole way. And I would say you want your stems to go into your wreath at least an inch so that they know that they've you know, really gone in and they're not going to go anywhere. And just keep stirring. 
standing back from it and having a look at how it's building and working together and yeah I'm just going to remove that leaf at the end so I've got a nice clean stem to go in and you'll find some of them will go in much easier than others it just depends on how dense your moss is at that point which is fine and we've got lots of stuff to go on here so you know don't feel like you've got to fill everything in this point at the beginning you see I've kind of gone all the way around already and I've got plenty left so yeah just think about your positioning don't forget about the inside of your wreath as well as the outside so I've got a nice short one here which is perfect for the inside of my wreath Sometimes your twig might go all the way through your moss, which mine has, and that's fine. You can just trim off the end of it. So I think I might, um, again, stop there for a while and do some of my rosemary stems. So with the rosemary, and um, you've got kind of foliage all the way down the stem which is lovely, but if you try to poke all of that foliage into the wreath base, you're going to struggle. So what you need to do is just pull off all the ends of them leaves so that you're left with a nice clean stem. Again, at least about an inch up. Some of these are much thicker than others. Some of them might even have some flowers on. It's got a lovely fragrance to it. So again, just removing them lower leaves. They come off really easily. And then working in the same way that we have for the olive and placing our rosemary in. Nice and easy. not forgetting the insides and the aim here isn't really to cover the entire moss base I personally like that it's on show a little bit I think it's more natural and organic and particularly with kind of the colors that we're using and everything I think it works beautifully so don't worry too much and by the time we've got everything else on it really is going to look wonderful so don't worry it's not quite like a Christmas wreath in that respect so if you do have trouble getting them in just give them a little wiggle that one's a particularly chunky stem you can kind of hear even when they've gone in and this one has got like a lovely shape to it so I'm going to work with that and actually put it right near the top and have it follow my wreath shape around you can kind of see that there You can hold it up if you wanted to and have a little look at it, move it away, put it on the floor out and find it's quite helpful just to see how the shape's building, whether you're, whether it looks even or whether it still looks circular. I've got a particularly long bit down here, which I love and I like and I don't want it to be too symmetrical, but I probably want to balance it with something over here and particularly something just to bridge that gap a little bit. It's not a very pointy one, so... that's why I like to leave some of them so I don't like to do all of them in one go just feel like having something up here that's also quite big and dramatic really helps sort of balance those two and I've got a nice bit coming out over here as well so 
Yeah, I'm pleased with how that's built up. So again, I'm gonna move on to something different um, next. And we're gonna be putting in our wax flower and Genestra, which just, honestly, if um, you've not had Genestra before, it's also known as broom, it smells incredible. So I'm sure you'll be enjoying that. Now, Genestra has loads of um, stems that come off the actual main stem which is lovely, um, but when you're cutting it, you just need to be mindful of that and sort of move these longer pieces out of the way so that you're left with, you can see there now, I've got a cut point there that I'll be able to um, have a nice piece to use in my wreath. So again, cutting them at an angle. And this is gonna add a really lovely splash of white to our wreaths. And if you know me and you know my home, I'm a big fan of white and neutrals and greens. And I just think they're so fresh and yeah, lovely for Easter with eggs, everything like that. I'm going to leave this one quite long. I think it's nice to have some bigger pieces thrown in. And again, it's got a lovely sort of natural bend to its stem. So again, try and work with that. And in the same way that we've been doing the foliage, I'm gonna find somewhere where that sits nicely inside that moss base. And you can see already, I mean, you know, I know these have still got compost on and everything, but you're so distracted by everything else going on with the wreath that you don't even notice. So I'm going to leave that one to one side before I do my wax flower. And wax flower is just a lovely, delicate flower that's um, very woody. You'll notice the stems are quite woody and it's a great one to work with for roots that are going to be kept um, in a moss base because they don't need too much water and they'll look really pretty even when they're kind of over and finished. So again, just cutting them off and you don't need to be too short about them. I think you can kind of tell now when we're building up, it's quite nice to leave some of these a little bit longer. And this is really gonna help fill in all of the gaps. It's a lovely filler. So similarly with the rosemary, you do want to strip the ends of them just so that you've got no leaves going into the moss base. And you're just gonna poke them in in exactly the same way. And although they're not pure white, um, I think that really helps with the, the color palette that we're using. And you might want some of them sort of smaller, further into your wreath and some of them standing a bit prouder. So I'm just gonna have one tucked right in, in there, that little space. long one I think I'd quite like sort of steering down a little bit and really take your time when you do something like this it's meant to be enjoyable relaxing and maybe you're doing it with your kids or your mom or yeah, it would be lovely to see you all in action making these over Easter. I 
And you can see I've got a little bit of a um, gap here, but I'm just gonna find a nice piece of this wax flower to help bridge it a little bit. I might need a couple. And that's why I do like to leave some of my foliage to one side. I think it just needs something else to break up the wax. So I've got a piece of olive here. Maybe even another piece. And you can kind of keep going as much as you want with this. It's knowing when to stop and stand back. And there's no right or wrong way with Breeze. And that's why I love it, because you will all have the same kit and you will all have the exact same stuff that I've got here, but they will all look so different. And I think that's what is so special and unique about Breeze. You don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. I'm just merely sharing the technique with you. So now I'm just sort of filling in where I think I've maybe got any um, gaps. And I've actually got a couple of flowers left that I might pop in. But we've still got our eggs to go and our feathers, so lots to go in lots to visually look at and like you can see the moss peeping through but i think that makes it just really lovely just want a bit more at the bottom there i'm actually going to use a little bit more of my genestra I saved to one side. I'm just sort of trying to stand up so I can see how it's building up from a bird's eye view because that's really how you're going to see it on your door. And I just feel like that's actually just one little bit too long. As much as I love it for its drama. It just didn't quite feel right. You can um, take bits out quite easily of your moss. I'd, I'd recommend not doing it too much um, because you will, the moss will get looser and looser and you don't want that. But you can get away with taking bits and pieces out if you want to move them around. It's no sort of biggie. Okay, so again, have a little, try and have a little tidy up. You can see my space is getting a bit messier and messier. And I find that if I have a clearer space, then it's just easier to see what you're working with. And have a little look if you've got any more gaps. Just got a little one there. Lovely, so I'm really happy with how that's come together. The next thing we're going to be doing is putting our eggs in. So you'll have found um, you've put some eggs in your kit and they're on these long wires. And all we're going to do with them, and you need to be relatively, um, they're, they're quite fragile, these eggs, so you know, don't bash them around. <laughs> um, but you're just going to cut them to about there with your scissors. Again, a nice spike and they just go in like any of the other flowers and you kind of want to hold them when you're putting them in you want to hold the wire not the egg pop them in like so and again with stuff like this I like mine to be in sort of clusters and you want to think about the whole wreath the inside the top the outside and how this is all gonna you're gonna see it all on your door so yeah have a you could even sort of position them on your wreath before you go ahead and actually attach these in. I'm going to have this one a bit closer. 
I think it's nice that you see some of them sort of peeping through. The only thing you want to hide is that wire um, stem, that white wire stem. And if you if you if you like a particular um, egg that you've popped in there, then just try and cover the the white wire with something that you've probably got left over at this point. Uh, I'm just going to show you as well. So I have actually broken one here, but I don't mind how a broken one looks. Just try and find an area where you can't really see that whiteness or you could use the one, use it in that direction, but put something over it. Just so it sort of looks like a cracked egg peeping through. I'm gonna have mine sort of peeping behind my tulip. And the genestra, as you'll be able to see there, is doing a great job at hiding that white wire inside the egg. And then just continue working round. So if any of your wires are too long, just take the egg out and recut them. You don't want the wire to poke right through to the back too much because it may damage your scratch or door. You've got wire cutters to do them with, and that is a Good idea. And yeah, I just think these are lovely for Easter. You can put as many of them as you have in as you want. nestling in there so once you're happy with your egg position so pretty much nearly there and we've got some feathers so you'll have found some feathers in your um, brown bags which are just lovely and again just perfect for Easter so there are a couple ways that you can put these in so you could attach these with just a blob of super glue or any glue really if you've got a glue gun yeah, super glue, PVA glue, anything like that would be fine. If you haven't got anything like that, then like similarly to the way we've done the rosemary, you can just pull away the bottom feathers and then you're left with a, a pointy stem that you can then poke into your moths. Um, or feathers do kind of just attach themselves and get a bit intertwined in, inside the, um, the wreath because you've got so much foliage and textures and stuff going on that, you know, the worst that's going to happen is that these may blow away. But I just simply like to do this. It's just really simple. Poke it in. I like them sitting near the eggs. 